Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. And this is going to be part two of a video that I released about a week ago, which was a collaboration with Graham, AKA Shivering Cactus. He's a whiz at Adobe After Effects and we collaborated together to actually make me a new intro sequence, which I absolutely love. Um, he takes my images, turns them into 3D objects and then manipulates them in space, uh, which is something I've always wanted to do. So he showed one technique on the last video and on this video he goes into further different techniques. So I can't wait to see them. I'm definitely going to be playing about with them and um, having a go myself with different objects. But anyway, sit back and enjoy the video. And of course, please don't forget to check out his channel. He's got some amazing uh, videos on space and different effects. And it's really great uh, to watch all of that and look at all the different things that you can do. So I shall see you at the end of the next video. with astrophotography. If you haven't seen part one, in that video I explained this is a collaboration with Astrobloke. We came up with a new title sequence for his channel, and in the previous video I showed one method for taking a 2D image, placing it in 3D space and animating it with a virtual camera. I'm sorry, I know you hate multi-part tutorials, but the lengths were getting out of hand. That's what she said! <laughs> Ahem. In this video I'm going to show you two further techniques for faking depth. Here I am in After Effects with the same comp as before, and here's the flying bat nebula as photographed by Astrobloke. This time I'm going to drag the image onto the new comp button in the project panel. This will create a composition with the same dimensions as the image. And now I'm going to use the mask tool and click and drag around the red hydrogen part of the gas cloud. I'm ignoring the blue cigar shape for now. And just like with the crescent nebula, I'm going to hit MM to expose the mass properties and feather it. I can use the checkerboard option to see the alpha channel as I do this. Then I'll reduce the mask expansion by half the amount I'm feathering. Next I'll make sure the layer is selected and go to edit, duplicate, or hold control and tap D if you prefer. And on the top layer I'll hit M to see the mask and delete it. And now I'll draw a mask around the cigar. And do the same with the feathering as before. I can use this solo option to temporarily turn off the other layer. Feathering masks is a quick cheat for times like this. Because the outer edge of the nebula is soft, this lets me cut out most of the stars and keep the detail I want. And of course, as we saw in part one, I'll add fake stars back in. Now that that's done, make both layers 3D. And then with the bottom layer selected, hit P to expose the position properties and move it back in Z space. That's made it shrink to the visible view. So on the top layer, hit M to see the mask again and in the drop down, set the mask to none, which turns off the mask. And then for the layers transfer mode, set it to screen. On the bottom copy, Hit S to expose the scale, and now scale it up until it's back to the right size. And then set the top layer's mask to add again. And set the layer's transfer mode back to normal. All this top and bottom stuff is getting confusing. So with the top layer selected, hit enter and rename the layer to Cigar. And then select the bottom layer, hit enter, and rename this to Red Bit. Or you know, something coherent. Okay, so it's not hugely exciting at the moment. Next, we're going to use a displacement map to fake depth to the cigar. Go to Layer, New, Solid. 
make it composite and black, and click OK. Hit Enter and rename this layer to Displace, and drag it below the cigar layer. Then go to Effect, Generate, CC Light Sweep. Use the Effect Center option to position the light line onto that bright star, and then use the direction controls to line up the line with the cigar. Set the sweep intensity to about 130, and then increase the width until the beam's width matches the blue tube's width. Okay, now turn off the visibility for the displace layer. Back on the cigar layer, go to Effect, Distort, Displacement Map. Set the displacement map layer to our displace layer with effects and masks. And now, watch what happens when I adjust the vertical displacement. It's sort of faking a rolling of the tube. When timed with a camera move and softened a little, this creates something I think is quite convincing. To soften it, select the displace layer, then go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Turbulent Noise. I'll turn on the displace layer for a moment, and now set the effects blending mode to Multiply. So now it's only applying to the light beam. And turning the layer off again, the distortion doesn't have a strong edge anymore. Okay, that's the clever bit done. Now we just need to add this comp to our original space comp. So switch back to that one, and drag the flying bat comp onto the timeline, and solo it for the moment. Now make it a 3D layer, and switch the view to top. Roll the mouse wheel to zoom out, and also solo the camera null layer, which helps see where we are. Click on the flying bat comp and start dragging it. If you hold down the centre mouse wheel, you can drag the workspace around. Position this comp far away from the original. Note how I'm waiting for the cursor to switch to Z or X before dragging it, so I only have to deal with one direction at a time. And unsolo the layers. Hit P to expose the comp's position property, and make sure you can also see the camera null's position. At 10 seconds in the timeline, set a keyframe for camera null. Then move the current time indicator to about 12 seconds, select the flying bat's comp position, hold control and tap C to copy it. Then select the camera null's position and hold control and tap V to paste the values. So the camera's point of interest will move from one nebula to another. Now move the current time indicator to 15 seconds and do the same for the camera. This isn't great because the camera is now too close, so switch the view back to camera, and using the dolly control, move the camera back so we can see the nebula. And playing that back, it's not great, the comp is too close and the camera move is really odd. Switch to the top view again, and using the Bezier handles for the camera's motion path, you should be able to adjust the moves. We'll probably be tweaking these throughout the rest of the project though, so don't spend too long right now. Also, the flying bat nebula seems too close to the crescent nebula, so let's move it a bit further. And move the null and camera, of course. And let's adjust the rotation of the nebula so the camera sees it straight on. But adding a comp like this brings it back to being 2D. So now, use the Collapse Transformations option. How cool is that? I effectively have a 3D model which my main comp can fly around and this will update. So let's do that. Use the Orbit tool to move around the nebula. And when you're happy with the move, go back to the first camera keyframe, scrubbing while holding shift will snap you there, and double click on the flying bat comp. Set keyframes on the displacement map for both the horizontal and vertical and set some quite extreme values. Then jump back to the main comp and move the timeline. And in the flying back comp, adjust the values so we appear to roll over the cigar. Now we can see the blue elements in the background which is pretty distracting. At this point the simplest option is to drag it into Photoshop, make two separate images. But as an alternative, you could copy the scar's mask to the red bit and change it to subtract. 
Then duplicate the red bit layer, remove this new mask from the copy and use a tritone effect to recolor the whole image. But because it's a duplicate, only the cutout shows. Adjusting the mask helps a little too. I know I've blown past that really quickly. If you want to see what I've done, the project file is linked below. Just before we jump to the final heart nebula, if you're enjoying this video, it's making sense to you and you're not irritated by the annoying cartoon in the corner, please can you hit the like button? I hate myself for asking, it makes me feel like a teenager. Except they're all on TikTok, so it's probably fine. One thing I don't hate myself for though, is to thank a couple of people. I set up a coffee account a while back to accept payment for some commercial work, and Space TV jumped on and bought me a coffee. Thank you. And I'm really sorry it never occurred to me before now to say thanks in a video. Flash forward to the end of 2022, and Gus Elander has bought me enough caffeine to keep anyone awake for a whole year. Gus, thank you. It was completely unexpected, but gratefully received. Right, for the third nebula, the Heart Nebula, I'm going to treat this in a similar way to the one from the first video. But with this awesome ring element, I think it would look good to use that as a boundary. So, pick a new point for the camera, somewhere away from both the other nebulas, and a few seconds further on in the timeline, move both the camera and camera null. Don't worry about things like the stars not covering the space, we can tidy that up later. Drop the Heart Nebula image into the timeline. Make it a 3D layer and expose its transform properties on the timeline. Then make it a child of the null layer and zero out the position and rotation values. We need to scale the image right down, but not so small. It is light years across after all. With it still being a child of the null layer, I can push it back in Z space and keep the scale larger. Now, using the parent dropdown, set its parent to none. Double click on the layer to open its preview and then select the mask tool and draw a couple of masks, clicking and dragging as before. Draw the outer mask first. This one is outlining the whole nebula. And then draw the second one, this time cutting out the middle. and then expand both masks on the timeline and set large values for the feathering. You'll notice my mask values are huge, but go by eye and feather this as appropriate. Set the second mask to subtract, so we have this heart-shaped ring. Now, click close on the preview window, then with the layer selected, go to edit, duplicate. On the lower layer, make it a child of the upper one. And in masks, set mask 1 to none, so it has no effect, and set mask 2 to add. Push this layer back in Z space. And then scale it up so it matches where it was, roughly. And with moving the nebula back in Z space from the camera's null, we do want to keep the focus where it should be. So on the upper image, hit P to expose the position and hold Ctrl and tap C to copy it. Then on the null layer, make sure the current time indicator is lined up on the last keyframe and hold Ctrl and V to update its position with the layer's position. And now you can have some fun moving the camera up, down, left, right, forwards, and look at that parallax. If you start to see edges, you could either reduce the camera move or edit the Mass 2's expansion and feather to fill in any gaps. Again, take your time with this and come up with a really cool camera move. For Astro Bloke's video, I pushed the camera through the layer, fading it out at the last moment. To get the stars back, select the CC Particle World effect on the stars layer and just expand the radiuses and positions until you can see them again. If I zoom out the view while the effect is selected, I should be able to make out the emitter shape. And there you go. Three nebulas, two YouTube channels, and one awesome journey through the stars. This whole project is in the description below. 
Remember to check out Astroblog's channel if you want to know more about astrophotography, and if you do make your own nebula animation, please post a link below. It would be amazing to see more of space animated this way. Maybe we could string them all together and create a massive sequence. That was uh, another great video from uh, Shivering Cactus, aka Graham. Um, I can't wait to actually have a little play with those effects. It'll be really good fun. I know what would be really great, and I know uh, Graham would love it too, is that if you go away and actually have a go with these techniques or have a little play with images and do different effects to actually share them with us, uh, with myself or Shivering Cactus, we'd love to see what you come up with. It's always good to see. Um, people's creativity and what they can do with things. I know that I'm going to be doing further stuff uh, with these kind of uh, tools and uh, Graham and I have also talked about further collaborations and ideas that uh, we've both got so that'll be really cool to share them with you too. So anyway I hope you've enjoyed the uh, video today. If you are interested in doing more please check out Graham's uh, YouTube channel which is called Shivering Cactus. The link is in the description below and I just want to thank all of you for your great support. It really means a lot and I couldn't do the channel without you. So until next time, please take care and I'd like to wish you all clear skies. <music>